How's it going everybody? Texas Man here. I hope you guys are all having a great day. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up if you guys really enjoy it. Subscribe if you guys have not already. Also do me the biggest favor of all, hit the bell notification button so you guys don't miss out on future videos or streams here on my channel. If you guys would also please head over to Twitch, follow me there at Douglas447. We're going to release once a week, whether it's for Call of Duty Battlefield, Halo, Destiny 2, and of course, if you guys have any movies or shows you guys want me to watch and review here on the channel, please let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, we're going to be talking about positives and negatives, and we will be talking about spoilers. So if you guys haven't seen Spider-Man No Way Home yet, this is your spoiler warning. I will be talking about tons of spoilers involving plot and characters and events that take place in this new Spider-Man movie. And of course, because this is part of the MCU... Um, this is continuing on with my MCU um, reviews, so final warning, this is going to contain spoilers, so if you guys haven't seen it yet, make sure you guys go see it. If you guys don't care about spoilers, alright, here, here we go, we're going to jump right on in. So of course this movie came out here in 2021, the movie is about 2 hours and 28 minutes long. If you guys end up seeing this movie in theaters, or you guys end up purchasing it digitally or on Blu-ray, so if you guys go and see this movie, um, make sure you guys um, stay. There are two post credit scenes. And of course, if you guys wait and get it digitally or on Blu-ray, make sure you guys stay for the two post credit scenes. Uh, the first post credit scene has to do with Venom, which is really cool. Um, of course, it ties in with how Venom, Let There Be Carnage, concluded. And then the last scene at the very end is not so much like a scene. It's kind of like a teaser trailer for Doctor Strange 2, um, Multiverse of Madness. So of course... WandaVision is going, I'm sorry, Wanda will be in it, and it's tying in with the ending of the WandaVision show, so make sure you guys watch that show before you guys go see Doctor Strange 2. It was really cool. Of course, there's a big rumor that somehow the X-Men are going to get pulled in to the MCU during that film, so that'll be kind of an interesting thing to see. And so, jumping back into Spider-Man No Way Home, I'm going to be jumping around throughout the entire film, um, so bear with me. So first of all, I was really scared about this movie. I thought this movie was going to be a disaster. Very similar to how Spider-Man 3 was. And if you guys have seen Spider-Man 3, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. When a movie tries to jumble too many characters, especially major characters, in a movie, it can turn into a disaster. Spider-Man 3 had Sandman, um, New Goblin, Venom, and Spider-Man, and all of the new and old side characters returning and that movie just turned into a disaster this movie had to juggle not only having tom holland spider-man but we also had here we go toby mcguire and andrew garfield spider-man in here we also had doctor strange and all of the side characters and all of the major returning villains that were in this movie and i was really concerned that with all of these characters that this movie was going to be nothing but complete, total fan service. Now, yes, this movie does have fan service in here, and this movie does have an original plot. It's kind of tropey, but the movie does have an original plot, and everybody that's in this movie is awesome. Everyone has a purpose in the movie, and everyone brings their right game. All the performances are amazing. Of course, it was awesome to see Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland and Tobey Maguire all together in an, a movie together fighting green goblin doc ock sandman electro lizard venom's not in the movie unfortunately so we have five out of the sinister sticks in this film um venom unfortunately doesn't do anything he's only in a post credit scene for like 90 seconds so that was kind of sad um i kind of wish that this movie dived into doing more with the spider man and the villains. I also wish that Vulture was in this movie because Vulture is alive. Like if they're going to go through bringing in major key villains that Spider-Man has fought, Vulture is still alive and I kind of wish that this movie, because it's the end of the high school Spider-Man films that Tom Holland is doing, Vulture is still alive. They mention his character once in one line in this movie but we never get to see him in the film, whether he's being a hero that's redeemed or a villain that needs to still be cured and helped by Spider-Man. Um, so I wish that he was in there, and I wish that the Spider-Man actually did more together. Like, they do have some really great chemistry. They do have some great dialogue and fight sequences together. I just kind of wanted more, and I think that if this movie was like half an hour longer, 
we could have got a lot more substance. Also, the villains in this movie really don't do too much. Like, they do a great job of what they're supposed to do. I wanted more. Give me more. That's all I'm asking for. I wanted some more. Um, if you guys have been keeping up with the Hawkeye show, at the end of episode 5, the big spoiler reveal is that Kingpin has been brought into the MCU. The original actor is still playing him. And of course, if you're going to bring Kingpin into the MCU, then you've got to bring in the person that's trying to take him down and kill him, Daredevil. So Daredevil, the big, you know, rumor and theory was that Daredevil was going to show up in the Spider-Man movie here and was going to kind of be like a counselor or slash attorney to Tom Holland Spider-Man to help him with the fact that everyone on planet Earth knows that Peter Parker is Spider-Man and that does happen. Daredevil is in the film. He's in it briefly. He does very little to the plot. He literally just gives some counseling advice for about a couple minutes and then he's completely absent from the rest of the film. It has been confirmed that the original actor will return for Daredevil uh, in the future in the MCU, so that'll be cool to see him. I really want him to be fleshed out, um, especially for those people who don't know who Daredevil is. When this character shows up on screen, um, there's a lot of people that I don't think have seen the Daredevil show. And so if they're going to make the original actor that played Daredevil in the show canon in the MCU, they really need to bring that show back into being canonized. And I think the best way to do that would to be make it where it's on Disney Plus, so people can, can watch it and understand the backstory of Daredevil, and they can understand the hype about Daredevil and the hype about Kingpin. Um, another major, major event that happens in the film is that Aunt May does die. So for Tom Holland and Spider-Man, both Uncle Ben and Aunt May have both perished, and Aunt May's death was extremely sad. Uh, but it did give us the great Spider-Man line, with great power comes great responsibility. Uh, I was also really happy that the film did dive into exploring more of the multiverse. The film's conclusion was cool, and it did remind me a lot of the original 2002 Spider-Man, with the fact that Spider-Man's having to live in an apartment, pay the rent every month. There's just tons of, you know references and easter eggs to past spider-man films including a bunch of little teasers and references of the animated movie into the spider-verse uh let's talk about a side character for tom holland spider-man ned the guy in the chair um somehow he is a descendant of this family that has the ability to wield magic so now ned is partially a wizard it's not really explained all that well in the film and to me it felt like they had to do this in order for them to have a mechanism for Tobey Maguire and, and Andrew Garfield Spider-Man to come into the MCU like if Ned didn't have this they would have to have find another way for the three Spider-Men to be in the exact same universe I just found it weird it really wasn't explained well and I kind of thought it was kind of like a tacked on thing to me it would have made a lot more sense if like Dr. Strange or Wong did it and Dr. Strange was like okay Tom Holland can't defeat all five of these villains by himself I'm gonna allow these two Spider-Men into this universe to help out in the final battle to me that would have been a lot better um would have made a lot more sense. Ned just doing it by accident and bringing them in because he's trying to find Peter Parker so um, him and MJ can hug him for the fact that, you know, Aunt May is dead. Ned doing it just felt really weird. I didn't like how it was executed, personally. Um, speaking of MJ, I thought she was cool. This MJ for the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies, I really haven't cared about too much. I thought... That in Homecoming, she was completely sidelined and really didn't do anything of interest. Uh, far from home, I kind of started to care. But in this one, I'm just like, okay, I can completely relate to Peter Parker and MJ in this movie. I thought the chemistry was great, and I really enjoyed it. The film, of course, does have a great plot. Like I said, I was really concerned about this movie not having a good plot with all these you know, fan service moments, which, of course, there's numerous ones in it. But I thought the movie had a great plot of how the Spider-Men have to work together to cure the villains. And that's something that the Spider-Man movies has always been about. Spider-Man has always been trying to not kill the villains, but he's been trying to help them. He's been trying to cure them. The villains, however, are just, there's 
straight out evil and all they want to do is kill spider-man because they think spider-man is the enemy and the cause for all of their pain and suffering in life so it was cool to see the spider-man actually work together to cure the villains and it was also cool to see the spider-man talk about their similarities even though they're from different universes and their differences so that was really cool however the film does leave out the fact that when all of the villains do get cured dr strange does something where um it ends up making where everyone forgets that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, so everyone gets sent back to their respective film franchises and slash universes. And it leaves out the fact of what happens to the spider man what happens to the villains now that they are cured and they're not killed off while fighting Spider-Man. Like, how does that work? Does Green Goblin still die even though he's cured? Does he get impaled by his glider does he still die does doc, doc ock still implode from his machine does you know what happens to lizard what happens to sandman like the closure part because they've quote unquote changed the toby mcguire and andrew garfield universes in this movie it does not explain what happens when everyone goes back to their universes so that's a little plot hole that i kind of hope does get resolved in a future Marvel film or a Spider-Man movie because it's really unclear like yeah everyone's happy everyone's you know been cured of all their problems and diseases or whatever you want to call them I just wish that the movie kind of explained okay now that you've cured everybody and they don't have to die what happens um a couple more things I hated the change that they did to Doctor Strange <laughs> um apparently Doctor Strange is no longer the Sorcerer Supreme, and Wong is because of the five-year blip, which I think is stupid. Doctor Strange has always been Sorcerer Supreme, and now because he was gone for five years, Wong is just by default. I don't like that change. Doctor Strange has always been the Sorcerer Supreme, and Wong being Sorcerer Supreme just doesn't... He doesn't act like it. He just acts like a kid that's constantly going to places and doing whatever he wants to, and I don't like that change. You can also, of course, tell in this movie, everyone gave a passionate performance. No one phones it in, especially William Dafoe. He only wanted to be in this movie if Marvel agreed that he could do his own stunts and his own fight scenes, even though the guy is 66 years old. He's a really old actor. But William Dafoe was like, all right, if you're bringing Green Goblin in, I'm doing it all. I'm doing it all 100% myself. And I just like those types of actors that they give such passion to their role. They're giving such energy. And it's fan service. I mean, William Defoe is Green Goblin, and I couldn't imagine any other actor playing Green Goblin besides William Defoe. Same thing with, you know, Jamie Foxx being Electro and all the other actors that do, like Doc Ock, Venom, Sandman, Lizard. Everyone does a great job. You can tell the energy and the passion was in everybody's roles. They wanted to give it their all, and they did. Um, a negative that I do want to, of course, have to point out is that if you want to fully enjoy this movie, you need to have watched every single Spider-Man movie ever made. So that includes all three of the Tobey Maguire movies, the two Andrew Garfield films, and Into the Spider-Verse. If you haven't watched those movies, you're not going to fully enjoy this one. And if you haven't, of course, seen Homecoming or Far From Home, this movie's first act is going to be completely confusing to you and you're not going to fully enjoy the first act. To enjoy act two and three, you need to see the Tobey Maguire and the Andrew Garfield films. So if you don't have knowledge of all those films, this movie will not feel impactful to you. You're not going to completely understand what is going on. You're not going to understand why other people that have seen all the films are enjoying it more than you. So just realize that this film has tons of fan service, yet it's going to have some new and interesting things in it that does make the movie stand on its own two feet. So, like, if you haven't seen it, all those, if you haven't seen all the past Spider-Man movies, it's okay. You'll still have some enjoyment in the film. And the film does explain, like, what's going on with all these different, you know, Spider-Man and Spider-Man villains coming in. It explains it in case you haven't seen it. But to fully enjoy like the little Easter eggs and references and dialogue, you have to have seen all those past movies. Last thing I want to say, I think this film was extremely overhyped. 
However, the film, of course, is packed with great performances. It has great humor, great action, and it's definitely the best Tom Holland Spider-Man movie ever made. Out of all three that he's done, this is definitely the best one that he's done. And I honestly hope that even though everybody, and yes, I mean everybody in the MCU has forgotten that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, I hope that Tom Holland gets to continue being Peter Parker slash Spider-Man in future Marvel films. Um, there's been a lot of rumor that they're already working on a Spider-Man 4 for the MCU, and that, of course, there's going to be another crossover film. And there's talk that Tom Holland wants to just be done with Peter Parker and leave Spider-Man how he is in the MCU. And I really want to have him continue, and I hope that they are able to do so. And with that, guys, I'm going to give Spider-Man No Way Home a 8.5 out of 10. I did enjoy this film. Definitely the best uh, Spider-Man movie when it comes to Tom Holland. It's not the best Spider-Man movie in my own personal opinion. I will be doing a separate video where I rank all of the Spider-Man movies. Um, this one will be included into it, and of course it's going to include the Tobey Maguire trilogy, the Andrew Garfield male films, and into the Spider-Man, I'm sorry, into the Spider-Verse. So that'll come out. Um, it's going to be a couple weeks because I'm working on a bunch of other awesome videos for you guys. So look forward to that. Good evening. Like I said, Spider-Man No Way Home, an 8.5 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys all have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I'll see you guys in the next video or stream. Bye, guys.